So I wanted to give uh, you guys a quick introduction to facial character rigs. Uh, I have this very simple cartoon mesh here, uh, which is going to be great for our demo. Uh, you can see the mesh density is really low. Um, if I was making a high-end character, uh, it'd be like 10 times the number of um, polygons easily. Um, so we've got a few very simple blend shapes, uh, which are these guys. There's like, um, how many there are? 20 to these. Again, if it's a high-end rig, I'd probably double that at least. Um, but for cartoons, that's fine. So that's those 28 shapes are just controlling the mouth. Uh, we have some eyelid shapes. Uh, we have over here, we have our eyebrows. So on a cartoon mesh, uh, the eyebrows are separate objects. So let's just get back our control list. So, these. Uh, so you can see that the eyebrows just float over the surface of um, our head, and that's perfect for a cartoon rig. Uh, we have also some bones controlling the rest of the animation, so we've got a bone for the jaw uh, and we have a little biped object which is controlling the head motion like this. Okay so let's go into the building of this very quickly. So order of operation is important and this is true for any software package so uh, we have our base mesh um, the base mesh is going to be duplicated and then modified to create all these guys over here, the blend shapes. On top of that we have a morpher. Uh, so what the morpher does is um, move this object uh, from wherever it is to this shape. So if you've got a head open shape like that, it's going to move it to that shape. Uh, and this is like a per vertex operation. So every vertex is its own little direction that's going to move in. Uh, so if I amplify, uh, let's see where's my line gone, it's over here, right. So I've got this jaw open shape. So to zero there, right. So you can see there's this, this vertex here which is on the chin. Um, and it's going to draw a straight line, it's going to move in a straight line all the way down there. Um, and you can see that this is the chin blend shape and you can see this. So it's, there's where we start here and there is where we're going to. So that's a straight line from there to there. So as I move the tar target it simply draws a straight line and in fact it will just keep going so the more I amplify this it will, it will keep going and um, because every vertex has its own direction they all move in separate directions so you can see in fact this neck object is moving slightly forward um, this one is also moving backwards but a slightly different uh, direction so you get this kind of swelling of the mouth I can also go kind of backwards and it will kind of collapse um, but it's moving, everything's moving in a straight line unlike uh, this skin animation. So as I move uh, the, let's just get that to, to zero again. Morph zero. So the draw animation, as I move the skin object, uh, you can see it traces an arc. So, and that is because the bone is tracing an arc, and all those vertices are connected to uh, that bone uh, to trace that arc. Um, so again, technically speaking, under the hood, what's going on is like every single blend shape has its own uh, vector per, per vertex vector, which is going to take it from this shape to that shape and to that shape and to that shape, etc. All of these guys all have separate vectors. And um, when you sum up all these different shapes, so you add all these separate vectors together, you get your facial animation rig and they, all the vectors getting added up together to create our pose. And then finally on top of that we have our um, subdivision object uh, which is going to take all that jaggedy mesh and just smooth it out um, and you can see it's turning each of these polygons for one polygon there is getting turned into approximately four polygons like that. Let's see if I turn that on and off you can see that we've got four polygons so that's two times two is four. 
and that is the basic kind of um, setup for a facial animation rig. Uh, you can get much more complicated bone uh, rig setups, uh, much more complicated layers of um, morph target setups, um, but this is fine, as I said, for a cartoon rig. An uh, important thing to note is, um, and I'll probably pick up this in the future, the order of operation, order of operation is really important. So uh, the skin, the the bone deformation part of the rig can can only go after, um, sorry, directly after the base mesh. So the skin has to go after the morpher. The morpher cannot go after the skin, otherwise everything breaks. So if I put this morpher after here, you can see that my bones are moving around and my everything connected to the bones is moving around, but the, um, the skin part is broken. Uh, whereas if it's in that order, then everything works. So it's morph, then uh, skin deformations, and then um, your subdivision. If you subdivide first, and then you apply your morph target, um, everything breaks again because the vertex can't just change. Um, and I'm just going to do one last little demo to explain why this is going on. So if here I put in a bend modifier like this, just pick some random bend. Um, so what's going on is that um, the uh, the mesh is trying to be taken from wherever it's going and it's going to be placed into uh, whatever blend shape we have. So if I drive the head open like this and set it to 100, oops, not 10, 100, like that, you can see that... Um, Turn that off. So as soon as I set it to 100, that is enough to take this shape, whatever it is, to that shape. Like that. So there's my morpher with this head open being blended towards that shape. So when it's set to 100, it's now 100% that shape, which basically means any bone animation I have is destroyed. Now, if I want to do um, morphing after skin operations, I have to do a very different kind of process, um, uh, which is based in uh, vertex normal space, but I'll get, go on to that later. Um, and you have to get some sort of specialized plugins in order to do that.